So in my opinion, the most important selection criteria for if I'm going to spray fungicide or not is yield potential. Do I have yield potential out there to save? Because fungicide doesn't add yield, it just saves what this plant has spent the entire season building. So if I'm gonna go out there and scout, obviously I'm looking for diseases, but I'm going out there to check for yield potential. Not only looking for yield potential, how much is out there, how well are we pollinated, but what are some things that are potentially um, holding this crop back? Fungicide cannot fix a nutrient deficiency. It cannot fix compaction. It cannot fix a ridiculous amount of rootworm feeding. So when we go out there, we're looking for um, disease pressure. We're also going out there to determine if there's enough yield out there that we need to protect. My second piece of selection criteria on fields that I'm going to spray or not spray is my weather outlook. Weather outlook on, is it conducive for a good crop? Do I have moisture in the forecast to feed these plants and feed the ears? And do I have any temperatures that are going to be adding a lot of stress? So again, we're back to that yield potential on the weather outlook. The other part of weather outlook is, is it positive for disease development? Now, these overcross a lot. Environments that are great for yield potential in our corn crop also tends to be those environments that are gonna give us more potential for yield robbing diseases. So when I look at the top diseases that we've got out there right now, gray leaf spot, it was coming in hot and it came in early. So while some of the other diseases were suppressed because of the dry weather that we were having in late June, early July, gray leaf spot doesn't need free water on that leaf to develop and grow. Instead, it actually prefers overall relative humidity in the air. So gray leaf spot has gotten a great start in these cornfields. Next, we look at northern corn leaf blight. I did just start seeing some of that developing here in the last week and a half. When we look at the weather forecast, it's not even 80 degrees outside right now, folks. It's the end of July, it's 79 degrees out. We've been getting moisture and we've been getting heavy dew. Those are peak weather conditions for northern corn leaf blight development. Special shout out on tar spot. So tar spot was very aggressive in 2018 because it felt a lot like this. We were getting rains in July and we were having those lower temperatures. It was prime tar spot development. Last year in 2019, we got off the hook a little bit because that first week of August was very hot and it was very dry and it delayed the development of the tar spot. Right now, when I look at our 10 day forecast and the fact that I have been finding tar spot out in these fields, I do look to find tar spot developing very rapidly. I'm already seeing where those pressures are starting to increase. Want a special shout out on Southern Rust. Now, not because I found Southern Rust yet, but because we've seen Southern Rust in central Illinois already and already in parts of Nebraska. And if we've learned anything from the pandemic, it's that diseases don't care about your state lines. So the thing about Southern Rust, and especially to my folks down uh, further south along Interstate 80, Southern Rust is an extremely aggressive disease and it takes less water and it likes heat. So if we do have some of these weather patterns shift away from gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, and tar spot, it does create a better environment for southern rust. So keep an eye on that one. The other portion of you know corn plant diseases, we want to talk about stalk rots. So in general and as a rule, fungicides are not going to relocate through the plant and protect the stalk from the disease. But what fungicides such as Delaro will do is help this plant stay alive for longer. The better health these plants have, the less likely they are to develop a stalk rot, therefore giving us better standability later in the season. So far, we don't have a whole lot of good data on how fungicides um, react and help on physoderma node breakage. There is a little bit of evidence that was that surfaced last year saying that if we can control some of the leaf disease, maybe we can keep that inoculum from falling down closer to the stalk and, um, and sitting around that node. So first and foremost, it's mostly about things like anthracnose stalk rot and keeping that plant as healthy for as long. 
So we went through yield potential overall and then our weather outlook both for yield and disease development. Third is going to be hybrid response. So whether you're in a corn on corn or a rotated scenario, we're still going to take a look at that hybrid response. And this hybrid response is both going to be in part when you look at disease ratings as well as how does this hybrid respond to a fungicide application even in the absence of disease pressure. Now, I'm not saying go out there and spray everything. We still need to be doing a good job of integrated pest management as well as disease resistance management. But we all also have to be looking at our bottom line for harvestability and making sure that we get the highest ROI as possible. Now there is a difference between um, resistance of a disease and hybrid as well as tolerance. So our ratings look at the resistance of a hybrid or that plant's ability to not become infected. On the other hand, you have tolerance and tolerance is the ability of these plants to continue to produce, um, produce yield even if there is a disease present. So I like to look at the hybrid response to fungicide in conjunction with looking at their disease ratings as well as their overall harvestability and long season stand. Another concern on a lot of Eastern Iowa mines right now is should I be spraying my down corn? Am I gonna make money? Am I gonna lose money? Here's the way I work through those decisions. First and foremost, did my corn successfully pollinate? That goes back to the yield potential conversation. If I didn't get any pollination in a great majority of the field, there's not as much yield potential out there. So that is my first consideration. Go out, walk through these fields, make sure that we had successful pollination um, as that corn was trying to come back up to vertical. Another thing that I'm asking guys is, do you have a dryer? And how quickly can you get to those fields to harvest? Now, for some of you guys in like, um, in some of those areas that got many, many windstorms and everything is steamrolled, that's a different conversation. But if you have fields here or there that were basically unfortunately timed between the stage of corn and those winds, the question is, do you have a dryer? And can you pick those fields first? If you have a dryer, then you don't have to let that corn and that plant deteriorate let that um, corn plant deteriorate so that harvest is very difficult, you can go out there and pick it and then dry it down. If you're a guy that doesn't have a dryer and you have to let it sit out there, without a fungicide application that plant is less he healthy, it's going to be more difficult to harvest that field. Now for those of you that have everything down, it's going to be a very long harvest season, unfortunately. So it's going to be important that we keep these plants that are laying on the ground that we just slapped on the soil where all the fungus lives, we need to keep that plant integrity as much as possible. So for those of you that are looking at a very prolonged harvest, um, I'm leaning more towards of make sure you've got pollination and then really be thinking about a fungicide application. Last thing, fungicide timing. There's always been all this brown silk talking. Brown silk is not a physiological stage in the corn plant's life cycle. It's just an indicator that those kernels have pollinated. Now this brown silk timing comes really from two places. There was a single year where there was a lot of fungicide timing data being collected. And that year, brown silk timing had the most ROI. It just turned out that the timing of that fungicide application lined up best with when we put our residual as well as our preventative fungicide on that plant. It lined up best that year for disease development and therefore there was the most yield response. So there's that talking point. The other one is when fungicides were first introduced, there was a lot of arrested ear syndrome. And the thought was that the fungicide was interfering with pollination. So people want to wait until after pollination. When in fact, we're safe after we get to full tassel. What was happening was fungicide applications that were being made prior to full tassel were still getting surfactant. That surfactant was interfering with the ovule, the kernel development. As soon as we're at full tassel and we have silks coming out the top of those ears, ovule, kernel, and ear development has set. So if we're making those applications, um, even with a surfactant, we aren't going to um, arrest those ears. However, if you are planning on making a fungicide application before we get to full tassel, that's when I would be pulling out those surfactants 
to make sure I'm protecting the ear. Last timing consideration is insecticide applications with your fungicide. There's so many rootworm beetles out there and I'm fairly confident that there's going to be a fair amount of planes that are flying with insecticide with them to try and help with our population and adult management on corn rootworm beetles. So when it comes to population control with insects, it's just like deer. You need to go after the females. So most of our populations are westerns, which is good because in western corn rootworm, we can differentiate between male beetles and female beetles. The male beetles emerge first and they've got a flat black back. About two weeks later, you get the females that are emerging and they've got the stripes on their back because they want to be pretty. They need the stripes, the patterns. That's how I remember it. So we need to think about timing as far as getting our fungicide on there to overlap as much as possible our residual with disease development. And then we also need to make sure that if we're going to include an insecticide application in there, we are killing as many females as possible. Going out there, doing our scouting, make sure the females have emerged and then making that application.